Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's broadcast on computer system validation, your path to documenting data integrity by Eileen Lizette Santos. I am Abby Pell of LabRoots, and I will be moderating today's event. Before we begin, I would like to encourage you to engage with us. You can submit as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Simply type them into the Ask Question box on the left and click in. We'll answer as many questions as we can, and we have time for it at the end of the presentation. If you have any trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Support tab found at the top right, or use the Ask a Question box on the left. It is my great honor to please welcome Eileen. Thank you, Abby. Welcome to the Thermo Fisher Scientific Webinar on Computer System Validation. I am Eileen Lizette Santos from the Professional Services Team, representing Thermo Fisher Scientific Life Sciences Division. On this webinar, I'll be sharing the importance of computer system validation and how it supports compliance, and the considerations on what needs to be developed and executed to validate computerized systems. Also, I will be providing an overview of the total validation process, our consulting services, and the components used to document a full CSV. In a quality system, validation is paramount as it is process of establishing documented evidence to demonstrate with high degree of assurance that systems, processes, workflows, and all parts within the scope will consistently function correctly according to specifications when the system is carried out for actual and routine activities, like for example, testing and production. Validation efforts encompass all parts of the system. So for hardware, there's IQ, OQ, and performance verification. For software, there's computer system validation, and the methods are validated by performing analytical validation. Laboratories that follow current guidance protocols, such as GXP and GAM5, or good automated manufacturing practices, require validation of computer systems according to 21 CFR Part 11 by US FDA and Annex 11 for data integrity of electronic data records. So as described in FDA's 21 CFR Part 11 and EU's Annex 11, the validation of computer systems is to ensure accuracy, reliability, consistent intended performance of data records, and the ability to discern invalid or altered records as a critical requirement of electronic records compliance. The computer system validation or CSB service that Thermo Fisher Scientific provides um, covers the requirement to help you comply with regulations and industry standards. We deliver comprehensive validation consulting from end to end thorough testing and documentation of data security, audit, and e-signature, or what we call the SAE functionalities. So to get into more details of what CSV is and what it requires, CSV confirms and documents that a, a computer system fulfills a set of defined system requirements. It focuses on user requirements or how, or how the user intends to utilize the software with emphasis on the SAE features. The verification of conformity is achieved by comparing actual system performance to predetermined requirements by executing test procedures and collecting objective evidences in the form of like screen captures, printed reports, and data files. And CSV, importantly, it validates that the system can identify altered or invalid records. So when should CSV be performed? Definitely at installation after the qualification of the instrument hardware by performing IQ, OQ, and IPV. In the software, such as the software upgrade, after a repair or replacement of the computer hardware, and when migrating to new systems or processes, transferring a system from R&D to a preclinical environment or to production. 
So actually, the decision to execute the CSV or to revalidate and its extent should be based on risk assessment, depending on the nature and the implications of the changes. On this slide, I'd like to share with you how Thermo Fisher Scientific could help you save time and money and help you reduce your compliance risk. So time, cost, and compliance are three major factors that a company considers critical in their operations. First, about time. Being fast is key to be at the forefront as soon as your clients raise the needs from your lab. And uh, with several priorities there are to juggle within a limited span of time, it is challenging keeping the balance to establish your data integrity strategy quickly while adhering to the most current and relevant guideline and at the same time, keeping the lab profitable. On the aspect of cost, Establishing an effective validation strategy requires huge resource allocation to develop a validation plan and methodology, also to conduct training of your staff, to implement and execute the plan, and to document the validation results. And having limited resources to cover the full validation scope can be risky. And in terms of compliance, we know that all labs face the pressure of meeting compliance requirements, considering that standards are dynamic, meaning they get um, updated from time to time, and changes are usually broad and nonspecific, making it difficult to quickly apply them in the lab workflows. So having mentioned those hurdles, here is how we could help you. We provide visibility into the full CSV process, that's from planning, document review, execution of the tests, review of results up to closing of the project, to ensure that your requirements, both from a compliance standpoint and transition to production, are successfully met. We also provide integrated support. So dedicated project managers who are highly experienced will work directly with you to guide your CSV process, and then a CSV specialist will conduct the test and provide full support during the on-site execution. And also as the system manufacturer, we can provide end-to-end -end support and solutions. In terms of flexibility, for every engagement, we provide an initial consultation to assess your specific requirements and ensure you receive the optimal solution. That's taking into consideration compliance with regulatory and international validation standards. And technical acumen, we have a track record of successfully completing hundreds of CSV consulting engagements globally, where we have constantly worked together with our stakeholders, such as our R&D and QA departments, to ensure that technical queries and requirements are addressed accurately. When you purchase a CSV consulting service, we will liaise with you to kick off the project. And as a prerequisite of um, CSV execution, the instrument must be installed and qualified by our field service engineer. And then what happens is that the project manager will then guide you through the entire process, including the plans, schedules, execution, and the system release for routine use. To give you an overview of the overall validation and consulting approach, the entire CSV engagement takes about 12 weeks, which is on average about 75 faster than when the labs do the validation on their own. So once we receive the order, the first two weeks will be spent on scheduling and holding the project kickoff meeting by the project manager together with the stakeholders from your side which may include your validation lead, IT, QA, and system owner, where we will be discussing the plan, timelines, and deliverables. At the same time, we will be providing an initial questionnaire, which will be the basis of document generation. Then the third week will be the start of document generation, the pre-testing documents, which are the validation plan, user requirement specifications, risk assessment, and the system configuration specification. 
And, and then the next two weeks is for the customer to review the draft of their pre-testing documents where inputs and comments are provided. And we will be redrafting the documents based on the customer feedback. Week six to eight is the final approval of the pre-testing documents by the customer. And at the same time, we start drafting the testing documents, which are the test plan, IQ, OQ, and PQ protocols. And then the review and approval cycle continue like the pre-testing document, where the customer will be provided two weeks to review and approve the documents. Simultaneously on the 10th week, um, we will be creating the draft of the pre-testing documents, which are the 21 CFR Part 11 assessment and traceability matrix. And then once the testing documents are approved, a certified CSB specialist will be on site for the execution of the approved protocols, and then a validation summary report will be furnished after the completion of all the on site validation activities. Week 12 is the closing of the validation project when the post testing documents are approved. And as the deliverables are completed at this point, project sign off takes place. As you can see from the timeline, majority of the activities, those that are marked in blue, are completed remotely as this involved documentation tasks, and one week is spent on site for the execution. So this timeline really depends on the level of customer feedback and the turnaround time as we move the documents from creation to review and to approval. Having a trusted partner to cover the CSB processes lessens the burden on the organization's resources and avoids redirecting the focus of the different members of the departments. So typically, an organization has a QA department which supports the larger business processes and not really focus on a specific system or workflow. And then there's the lab, on the other hand, which focuses on operations over validation and quality management requirements. And of course, there are third-party consultants who may fill the gap, but you also have to consider that their knowledge on the instrument software and SAE features may not be that extensive for them to completely support um, a CSV. So the clear advantage of using the CSV service boils down to having a complete validation report. So that's having a dedicated project manager focusing on the project from start to finish, having an experienced validation specialist who understands the industry accepted approach and validation processes, who has the knowledge on the software's SAE features, functionalities, and workflow, and who executes the test cases and documents the results in an industry accepted format. Another important support that we provide is having the flexibility to accommodate some of your requirements and validation policies into the documentation um, templates. So our CSV covers all that you need in about 10 to 12 weeks for a reasonable and um, low price. Just as a reference, here is an example of a calculation made for an internal CSV effort, considering the average lab resources allocated for validation and labor rates in US dollars. And also considering that um, a CSV can take from four to 12 months when the labs do the validation on their own, or if they choose to engage other consultants. So let's say for a validation team of four, including specialists for computer systems and quality, a lab manager and a project manager, the cost could range from about 96 to 192 grand for a six month project and 192 to 384 grand for 12 months, which is really a high investment for the company. As you would have noted by now, huge amount of time is invested on documentation for any CSV. As a rule in validations, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. CSV consulting services include comprehensive documentation as a tangible evidence that all software features within the SAE scope are suitable for intended use. 
A full CSV has 12 components as per industry standard, and these 12 documents are mapped to the GAN5 validation lifecycle for configurable software. So just to br briefly describe the different documents, so we start with a validation plan, which is a high-level document that is essential to the success of the validation. It defines the validation scope and key deliverables. And then we have the validation risk assessment, which documents identified operation risk of the, of the system, impacts and prescribed mitigations according to GAN5 guidelines. Then, of course, there is the user requirement specification, which states the system requirements. And then the system configuration specification, which describes the intended configuration, including um, system architecture, security, and data processing as some of the examples. And then, of course, we have a test plan, which describes all tests identified for the user requirements. And this um, plan supplements the validation plan with details for test execution, prerequisites, collection of objective evidences, and documentation. And then we have the IQ, OQ, PQ protocols, which are the three phases of testing that involve the execution of tests using specific instruction results and acceptance criteria. And the execution of the test cases is highly supported with objective evidences, which will be attached together with the protocol. Also, we provide um, a traceability matrix, which confirms that each user requirement has been tested and documented in accordance with the validation plan. And then the 10th document is the 21 CFR Part 11 or Annex 11 or GAN5 assessment, whichever is um, applicable to your regions and your regulations. It contains a checklist that maps the guidelines and how these are met either by technical controls through testing as covered in the IQ, OQ, PQ, or procedural control by having relevant SOPs in place. In addition, we have a quality assurance review. It's a supplementary document in a checklist form, which can be used by your QA department to review and ensure that the validation steps and objectives have been met and the deliverables are complete. And lastly, we have a validation summary report, which is the executive summary of the validation results and this, doc this document is often the starting point for regulatory auditors to gauge how the validation was, um, was carried out. We have developed our CSV plans with different levels of service and documentation included that would best fit your needs. So in that way, you can invest in the service that caters to your specific requirements and budget. So with the package four here, which is the complete package, you get the full service. So that includes project management from end to end, the full documentation set, full validation support, and on-site execution, just exactly as I described earlier. And then the first package is um, the minimum package, which is the base. It includes three documents, um, installation qualification, operational qualification, and system configuration specification. So these documents are provided without customization, meaning the documents are in standard format, and we provide limited project management support, including a one-time consultation and remote support, and execution of the test protocols is not included. The second package is PLUS, which is a level higher than base, as you will receive two additional documents, so that would be a risk assessment and user requirement specification, in addition to SCS, IQ, and OQ. So this package comes with consultation for the five documents, and similar to BASE, the package does not come with document customization and on-site execution. There is also an option, the premium package, with, which provides the full documentation suite, but with limited support in terms of document customization and project management. So it's only limited to remote support without execution. So in case, of, in case of additional services and support that you may require for the different CSV plans, 
We have add-on services like execution add-on. And in case you need additional documents, we have document add-on offering that you can purchase with a CSV plan of your choice. Uh, please take note, however, that for our bioproduction systems, which are the MicroSeq identification and AccuSeq systems, we only offer the complete solution because these are deployed in highly regulated environments where a full CSV is required to comply with GMP and 21 CFR Part 11 requirements. The value of the CSV consulting service is um, directly proportional to the coverage and services included. As you can see, as the value of the CSV consulting service increases, your risk potentially decreases and the opportunity for compliance potentially improves. So choosing the right CSV plan really depends on your available resources, experience, and expertise on CSV. And it is very important to, ba to balance compliance needs with risk management. All right, I think this is my last slide. So as a summary, validation of the computer system is an integral part of the full validation process. Adopting the best industry practices and investing in validation efforts place the organization in a better position towards higher productivity, um, faster turnaround time to production and testing, and higher confidence on compliance. And partnering with Thermo Fisher Scientific for your CSV needs saves you time, costs, and assists you in compliance as we provide first dedicated project manager to guide you on the entire validation process, a CSV specialist on site to do the execution of the IQ, OQ, and PQ protocols. You will receive a comprehensive and complete set of documents. We accommodate some of your specific validation information to be included into the documents. And a full validation su support is provided while the CSV is ongoing from the kickoff to project completion. For further information about Thermo Fisher Scientific CSV Consulting Services, please visit our webpage or if you have any questions, please contact us by email. So on behalf of the professional services team of the Life Sciences Division of Thermo Fisher Scientific, I would like to thank you all for attending this computer system validation webinar. Thank you, Eileen, for a very informative presentation. We did receive some questions um, already, and I would like to start with the first question. Is CSV a one-time effort? Right, so actually, if there are no changes made within the system, the CSV, it remains valid, and the system is considered to be in a validated state. So CSV has to be redone in events like um, a major software upgrade, repair of the computer or replacement of the hardware as some of the examples. And the extent of revalidation really depends on the type of change and the effects the changes have on the system. Great, okay. And um, what is the difference between software qualification and CSV? That's a good question. Um, software qualification focuses only on testing to demonstrate that the software meets specified or standard requirements, while CSV has a broader scope as it ensures conformance to user needs and intended use. So the testing and documentation are more extensive and comprehensive for CSV. Thank you, Eileen. And we have time for a few more questions here. Uh, the third question is, are the 12 documents required to comply with the CSV requirements? Right, so the 12 documents that I mentioned earlier are industry accepted for complete validation based on regulatory requirements such as GXP, 
um, FDA and um, Europe's Annex 11. Excellent. All right, and we have a couple more here. Um, the question is, what takes the longest time to develop a CSV if we are to do it on our own? Right, well, to come up with a complete set of documents is already time consuming. Plus the amount of time that you need to put in to identify the user requirements completely and ensuring that you have test cases built for each of the requirements, both for the technical and the procedural aspects. Thank you so much, Eileen. And the final question here that we're gonna to take today is what are the risks related to an incomplete execution of CSV? Okay, so non-compliance to regulations pose a high risk. So CSV is actually taken seriously by FDA and by regulators. And if you happen to check the FDA warning letters, there are several related to data integrity issues. And that could have been addressed if CSD, CSV, I mean, was done correctly and completely. Thank you so much. All right, well, that concludes our question portion of the presentation today. And as a reminder to our audience, questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed via the email address you provided at the time of registration. Thank you again to our speaker, Eileen Lizette Santos, and to everyone who participated in this presentation. We hope you enjoy the rest of the event.